Hi everyone, well thank you for joining to me today. So this is quite exciting for me today um, as it's my first ever YouTube or online tutorial. So introduce myself, my name is Philippa. I run a company called Philippa Gun Art uh, where I teach adult classes, children's classes, adult parties, children's parties. I do workshops within schools and workshops to WIs or people around the community. So I thought I'd bring it to YouTube, so let's wish me luck. So you are joining me today to paint this painting of a palm tree in the sunset, okay? It's a really nice, simple, but effective painting to do. Please don't look at it and think, I can't do that. So often we think, oh, I'm not sure I'll be able to do that. This is all about gaining confidence, okay? You can do it, I know you can. Okay, so let's talk about the equipment we're gonna use. Okay, so today we're going to be using acrylic paint. I say today, I always use acrylic paint. Uh, the reason being, it's fantastic for beginners. Okay, so if you are doing your painting and something goes wrong and you're not sure about it, with acrylic paint, you can always just let it dry and then add white to it, go over the top, then re-go over with the paint that you were originally putting on. Okay, it's also fantastic because it's got such a sheen to it. And now that sheen, or shine, should I say, Will stay there so if you don't water it down too much don't dilute it you'll really be able to get the texture in there and then you'll see the gloss on afterwards so the colors you are going to need for this painting are blue yellow orange then another blue black and then i've done two dollops of white now i always put out the colors in the order that i'm going to need them generally because if i'm talking um in a classroom and then I see that somebody's going onto a bottom colour and we're only on the second. It's just nice to be able to have it in order and know that actually we're probably not on that colour yet. So I just always place them in the colour that I'm not going to, sorry, in the order that I'm going to need them. Okay, the two separate whites is because this one, whenever I pick up colour, I generally pick up a little piece of white. Okay, so if I put the blue into that white, then decide I'm going to put the yellow into that white, I'm going to end up with green. So I've kept this white for this blue and this white for this yellow, okay? So put them in two separate places. Also, my biggest tip for you with acrylic paint would be get yourself a good white, okay? So with a lot of the other colours, you can build them up and build them up. But sometimes you get whites in acrylic paint and they're actually a blending or a mixing white. You're looking for a really nice kind of heavy bodied titanium white, okay? And that will cover over anything. Then let's have a look at the brushes today. So. We have a medium flat brush. It's really good for painting our backgrounds in, okay? You get quite a lot of coverage in a small space of time. So that's a good one to have. I then have a fan brush, probably my favorite tool. Fantastic for doing grass and kind of wild, long grasses, adding texture onto trees. Okay, just mainly mark making, it's a brilliant brush. Okay, then we just have a basic round brush. Okay, we use that quite a bit as well. That's normally your everyday brush. Then I have a very fine round brush, okay? This is because I don't use much pencils, so I don't need to do a lot of drawing, so I need something to add my detail in afterwards. And then I have a very small flat brush, which will be good for our reflection in the sea today, okay? I then have a pencil. I've got J cloth, but you can use a tissue or kitchen roll. Just anything to wipe your brush out on, okay? That is important to have as well because we're not going to be really saturating our brush today. So we want it kind of almost dry again by the time we come to use it. I then have a spare palette, which is a paper plate, okay? Which is going to be my mixing palette. I then have a canvas. You don't have to have a canvas. You can do it on paper. Um, the only thing I would say is if you get into painting quite a lot, maybe get yourself a um, watercolour pad or fine art paper, just because it's got a little bit of a grain to it. So if I was to go and do this on cartridge paper, uh, it will shrivel up. We've all seen it. When your paper gets wet, it screws up, okay? And I've been known to take this work home from holiday clubs and re-iron it and give it to the children, okay? But having said that, I have got a piece of paper, which is gonna be my practice paper. It's always good just to make sure like, I wipe out my brush, check my brush is clean on there. I might decide, oh, I'm not sure how to do this brush stroke. I'll give it a little go first. Finally, a water bowl. Okay, right, we're ready to begin. Okay, so you'll hear me say today, load up your brush. Okay, you're gonna wonder what that means. That means put plenty of paint on it. Okay, so when I say load up your brush, okay, 
means put a good amount of paint on. So first of all, we're gonna load up our paint with white, okay? Then I'm gonna take a small amount of that blue. Okay, so can you see? Mainly white, small amount of blue. And I'm gonna go from side to side and I'm only gonna do a very small amount, okay? So probably about the width of my paintbrush. I'm gonna go across there once and then I'm gonna stop, okay? So when you're starting, put it to that top corner, okay? And take your brush from side to side. Can you see, I'm not stopping in the middle, I'm going side to side. Now I'm working that into my canvas. If I get lighter and darker bits, I am more than happy with that. As you just saw, I didn't mix my paint, did I? I took it so it was separate. I'm gonna do it again, but this time I have plenty of blue on my brush, so I'm not gonna add any more. So I'm just popping it in that white. I wanna be slightly lighter. This is gonna be my final stripe of blue here. Okay, and then we're gonna leave a gap. Right, so ready, don't go down too far. You put it on, and we're going from side to side. Can you see that lovely kind of transition into that lighter blue? So in the art world, we'd be looking at something called a gradient, which just means a nice smooth transition. So can you see that? I've got a slightly darker, and then I'm coming down to slightly lighter. Now, I need you to rinse out your brush. I actually need fresh water, guys. We will go and get some in a moment. Okay. Now, with your pencil, I want you to go just before halfway coming down and put a line in there, okay? Ready, just a very faint line. I'm gonna do mine slightly harder so you can see it, but you'll wanna keep yours nice and faint. Okay, then again, I'm now gonna start the start of my sunset, okay? So I'm gonna go from orange to a yellow to a lighter yellow into the blue. So I'm gonna take my orange. Once again, you'll see I'm just picking it up. I'm loading it up, okay? and I want to take some yellow. By picking up two different colors, just gives you so much more texture, guys. Okay, so can you see, on my brush now, I have bottom on the, uh, sorry, bottom. I have orange on the bottom and yellow on the top. I'm now gonna run along this line, okay, from side to side. Can you see, I'm working that in there. Okay, my first part of my sunset. I'm now gonna wipe off that excess orange. So I'm wiping it off. You can use that on your tissue, you can use it on your spare paper here. Okay, just gonna wipe it off, but I wanna keep some in there. So I'm not gonna rinse out my brush, but what I am gonna do is add some of that yellow in there, okay? Picks up some of the orange that was in there as well. Then I'm now gonna put my brush, so I'm slightly onto the blank canvas and I'm slightly on the orange, okay? So if I show you here, can you see my brush if I put it there? So I've got half on the white, half on the orange. Okay. And this is gonna be our transition into getting the lighter part of the sunset. So what you should be seeing, is it getting lighter as it's going up? It's looking good to me. Next part, wipe off that excess orange again. Just going in with the yellow. I'm trying to avoid the orange this time. Once again, remember, a half on your blank canvas, half on your orange. And I'm gonna pull this in now. Now, I'm not going far up. I'm only going half of the brush width. Next time. Okay, I'm wanting to go lighter, so what should I add? You've got it, I'm gonna add some white. Okay, so remember, both sides. You wanna put it on both sides as well, I'll show you because that way, when you're bringing your brush across, you're coming back this way. And if I didn't have it on both sides, I'd be putting it on this way, but I'd be taking it off as I come back. So that's important that we get it on both sides. Now, I'm gonna wipe off that yellow. Okay, and I'm going just in with my white. Okay, so once again, we're gonna go half on your blank canvas, half on the yellow. I've got plenty of yellow still in my brush, so it's not gonna give me a pure white. Let's see how it goes. Looking kind of good to me, guys, look at that. And I'm gonna work it down as well. I'm gonna work my brush down. 
when I'm doing it, I'm using the tip of my brush. Okay, so it's just the tip the whole time to get this really nice smooth blend. If I went in really hard, using the whole of it, can you see? Can you see the marks? So if you get them, just use your tip and you're just stroking them out there. Okay, now for this last bit, I'm going to alter this just slightly. Okay, so I'm now going to wipe that out of my brush. Wipe it out. I'm going to pick up some white. But the whole time we've been using our brush vertical. So we're going from top to bottom, haven't we? We've been doing it this way. This time I'm changing my brush. And can you see, I'm now putting it into a horizontal position. So I'm going to take this down. I'm going to wipe off. I put paint on there, but I'm going to wipe it off. So I've just got a small amount on. And I'm now going to stroke this in, okay? So I'm bringing up, because guys, what does yellow and blue make? You're right, it makes a green. And do we want a green sky? No, thank you. Not today, anyway. Maybe when we're doing the Northern Lights, we'll have a green sky, but not in this one particularly. Okay, so can you see now, I've got this lovely sunset. I'm gonna put a little bit more white on mine. I'm gonna try not to be too picky today, guys, because I know watching anything for too long can become a little bit tedious. And the last thing I want to be is tedious, okay? Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Okay, give it a good wipe through. And we're going on to our blue. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at our sea. Now where the sun meets, sorry, where the sunset meets the uh, sea, it's called the horizon. And it's the kind of, where the ocean is at the back there, it's the deepest part, okay? So it looks slightly darker. When we come into the shore, we're getting lighter because we can see sand and seaweed and different bits through it. But at the back, I need that to be my darkest blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue here, okay? And I'm gonna put that onto my mixing palette. I need to darken this down because on our horizon line, the sea is always darker. It's just the furthest away, okay? So as you come closer into the shore, the sea will get lighter, slightly more greenier, because you'll be able to see through, you can see through to the sand and the seaweed, so it changes slightly. So this part, I'm wanting slightly darker. So I've put my blue on my palette. Now, can you see, I'm putting the tiniest amount of black in there. When mixing colors, always, always, put more of your lightest color in first. Okay, and then you can always add your dark to it, but if you put too much dark in to start off with, you can't do anything with it. It just completely overpowers it. So, I'm now turning my brush to the same way as the horizontal section we did up here, and I'm gonna feather it along that line there. Okay, once again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're gonna put that land in. So I'm just gonna bring this across and just follow my line. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my brush around. So I'm now going vertically, so top to bottom, and I'm gonna give myself one strip across there. Okay. Okay, brilliant. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up some of this blue. I'm not rinsing my brush out. I'm not adding any more black to it. I'm just picking up the blue. I should still have some dark in my brush. So therefore I'm gonna get slightly lighter, but not as light as I will be on my next part. Can you see I'm bringing that along across there? So every time I do it, I'm bringing it right from one end to the other. When I'm doing it, I'm doing it with my tips as well. Okay, so rather than pushing down flat with my whole brush and getting these marks, I'm using it with the tip of my brush, okay? Now, I'm gonna pick up some of this white, okay? I've gone back to that white that I've already ruined with the blue and messed it up. Okay, I've got plenty of blue on my brush, so this should give us a nice transition into getting lighter. Can you see I'm working that in there? Now I'm gonna bring it up, so I'm going over that line slightly 
just so I don't get any sort of band through there. And I'm going backward and forward. I'm going to carry that on down there now. Add in a little bit more white again. And bringing it down. From side to side. Last bit here. Okay, right, now for rinsing my brush. And I'm gonna swap over now, and I'm gonna use that fine paintbrush that we spoke about. So, what I want to add here is that land we spoke about earlier. Okay, just so it gives us a little bit of interest. So I'm just gonna put my brush into the water and I'm just gonna add some white to it. Okay, so I have put water on there. I don't want it too thick, I sound like Goldie Block blocks now, but I don't want it too runny either, okay? So really is about trying it out and seeing, you're thinking, oh, this is gonna work, okay. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That seems like it's gonna be okay. So I put a little bit on my canvas and I can see it's not running off, but it's not clagging, it's not dragging. Okay, so I'm now going to just very loosely create myself a little bit of land coming over the top here. So very slightly just adding a few hills in there, just making it look slightly more interesting. Okay, so I'm just coming down. And then I'm gonna bring a slightly bigger hill just up the side here, and I might do that on the other side in a moment. I will have a look. And then when I'm painting, I'm painting that in, going backward and forward. Now, going over with black is fine because it's a more dominant colour. Okay, whereas if I try to go over with a, I don't know, say a purple or a green, this would be giving me an awful khaki colour. Okay, so it's really important to learn your palette but we'll go through that at a later stage. Okay, I'm sure that'll be another tutorial. Just bring that down here, okay. Okay, I think I can define that slightly more, can't I? Be a little bit braver. It's all about being brave, isn't it? So I'm gonna put one in there, one in there. Okay, and then I might come along here. This gets a little bit more. Happy. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to leave that just for 10 minutes, just until we feel our sky is dry. So just to do a little test, what you need to do is you just need to give it a little tap. If it feels tacky, don't paint it. Let it dry completely. Okay. Because um, acrylic paint will pull off each other. So you either need to catch it when it's very damp, okay, and acrylic paint dries incredibly fast, or you need to wait until it's completely dry. So I'm gonna let that completely dry. Okay, I'll see you back here shortly. Okay, so now mine is touch dry. I'm gonna put in my sun. So I've just gone and found myself just a bottle of paint, just so I can pop that in the middle there very lightly, I don't want it to flatten down my canvas. So I'm putting it in the middle, okay? So you don't have to get a circle, but it's just an easier way of doing it. Taking my pencil and I'm drawing around that. I'm drawing around it very lightly though, because I need my paint to cover that afterwards, okay? So that is where my sun is gonna sit. Brilliant. Now, I am going to take this brush here. So on my medium round tip brush, okay? I'm then going to, I'm not putting any water on it. I'm going to just take some of that white, the white that I'd used with the yellow before, and I'm gonna put that into the middle. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna start painting in a circle motion. I don't wanna to come too far out of this. Okay, I'm just putting the white through the middle there. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white but this time with a little bit of yellow. Definitely more white than yellow again, okay? 
and just run this through there. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that. Now, with yellow, I will tell you a secret. It is quite gutless without white. Yellow covers nothing on its own. Okay, so even if we were going, you wanted a striking yellow on this, I would say put some white with it, then add your yellow again afterwards. So you're going to want about three layers. We're not going to want that. We're just looking for a kind of a subtle sun here. Okay, what I don't want though is my pencil marks. So I'm just making sure I get rid of them. So to get rid of your pencil marks, add white to your paint. Okay. Almost complete. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I've finished my sun. I want to put in the slight reflection. So this is where we're going to be using the smaller flat brush, okay? So when we're putting in our reflection, we must start from the sea and not on the land, because obviously the land isn't particularly something that's gonna to reflect too much of the sun. So I'm going to use the white that I've been using with my yellow, and I'm only gonna add a tiny little bit of that yellow, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dot some of that off because I would rather it be done with almost a dry brush than too wet. I'm gonna put my brush horizontally again. Okay, so we're moving it all the time, aren't we? Okay, and I'm going to then put strokes through my C coming down into almost a point, okay, getting smaller as they come down, okay, and leaving gaps out because we want to be showing there would be ripples in our C. So we don't want a pure triangle coming down here. So I'm just going to take this now. Can you see when I'm doing it, I'm just touching it. And I'm doing the same as I done up here when I was blending into that sky. I'm doing the same as with kind of the horizon line. I'm just going very softly through here. And I'm just bringing that down. And if bits come off, that's perfect. I like them little bits. They're showing like it's even more ripples through there. Just bringing them down. I'm just bringing that. And as I get down, they're getting slightly fainter until they kind of wear you off. Just putting a little bit more up here. Yeah, happy with that. That is looking great. Okay, give that brush a good rinse out, leave it in my jar. If your water starts to look like this, you might need to change it too. I have a fresh one here. However, everything we're gonna do now is gonna be black. So once again, like I said before, it's more dominant, so it's not going to show up. The green is not going to come through on that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to put myself in a palm tree. Now, on my original, my palm tree was in the middle. However, I'm thinking we spent a long time kind of on our sun and our reflection. I want to show you that off. So I'm going to put it to the left-hand side here. Okay, when I'm doing this, I'm just going to guide it out almost like I'm drawing a banana kind of shape. Not too curved, but we want it so it looking swaying over. So I'm taking my pencil and once again, very light when you're doing pencil on painting. Okay, and very carefully as you go over that black. Okay, so I've brought that up to there. I'm now going to take this wider at the bottom this side, but I need to finish it off around here. So I put a wider mark here, a one a marking slightly closer to the top. I want to join them up now, okay? Still keeping that kind of curved shape almost. Once again, being careful as I go over that black, not to drag it up. Perfect. I'm going to give myself, oh, I don't know, we'll say five leaves now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now... I'm going to leave this one till last because my sun is still slightly damp. So if yours is damp, just give it time. You can go away and come back and do this part. There's no rush whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to use my finer paintbrush. And I'm going in with this black. 
Okay, and I'm now going to go on my outline of my palm tree. Okay, so I'm taking this nice and slow. Going to add a little bit more water to it. And I'm just pulling that up here. Pulling it up over my black. Okay, I'm then going to do this side. I'm doing the outline first because this is a bit that's going to take a slightly longer because we're going to make sure we've got a nice smooth finish on that edge. Okay, we spent such a long time getting this beautiful background. The last thing I want to do is now go in with my palm tree and smudge it. So take your time. If you can see me now, my tongue is probably hanging out where I'm concentrating so much. So if I'm concentrating that much, you should probably concentrate that much too, okay? Just going up and down with it. Keeping, making sure, sorry, my brush strokes are all going in the same direction. Just so we don't. It's fine to do it this way but if you're going to do it horizontally keep that going all the way up okay what you don't want to see is it going vertical one time and then slightly further down it's going horizontal just make sure you're keeping it going in the same direction all the time okay now i need to paint in these leaves i'm going to bring that one slightly further if I lent across, I'm going to feel slightly awkward. So just turn your canvas, okay? Just keep it turning so it suits you. Make it comfortable for you, make it work for you, okay? Don't try and get into an awkward position and then think, oh, I can't get there, I can't get there. You, There's no right or wrong here. If you want to turn your canvas upside down to make it easier, turn your canvas upside down. Okay, so I'm just going over the top of them pencil lines to be put in for our leaves. Gonna add a little bit more water. You feel it getting slightly clumpy, just add that water to it. Okay, and then again, very carefully over this one because it's still slightly damp. And then turn again. making sure I'm not putting my finger on a wet piece of paint. And then my final one, going down here. Now I know what you're thinking. They look nothing like palm leaves. You're absolutely right, they look nothing like palm leaves. So now we're gonna make them into palm leaves. I've done my outline, kind of my spine of my leaf as such. Okay, I'm now going to do this very kind of Flicky motion, I hope you can see it all. Okay, I'll bring this down here. So I'm coming down and I'm going flick, 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 all the way down. Okay, so once again, I'm putting it onto where I've just done my outline and I bring it down in a flick motion, okay? So I'm putting it on, pulling down and pulling off. It's quite a quick motion. I will show you, I am going softly though. Let me give you a, that paper we spoke about earlier. So, if I was to quickly go like this and push really hard on my brush, I'm gonna get something like that. What I want is something slightly more delicate and a little bit more uniform. So the whole time, okay? It's just a very smooth motion. And it's when you're pulling that off, that's making it thinner on the ends, giving it more of a frothier feel. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. And I'll come around here. I'm gonna start from where my tree trunk is and pull out. I'm gonna turn it, didn't feel comfortable with where it was, so I'm turning. I really hope you can see all of this guys because the camera is up there and I'm down here so I'm hoping this is coming out okay. Ok, 
fun. Now, final one. Remember, I said this one might be slightly damp still. So I'm going to take my time over this. Okay, so I've turned it around and I'm pulling them. Now, do you know, you can almost darken any colour by adding black, except for yellow. If you add black to yellow, or yellow to black, sorry, you are going to get a green. And we don't really fancy a green sun. So I'm being as careful as I can. Perfect. Maybe fill that in a little bit. There you go. Right, our final part. And we've got my firm favourite, the fan brush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just putting some water on there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Just adding some water to it. Okay, I'm picking up some of that black. I'm putting that black on there. from root to tip, okay? So the bottom of the bristles to the tip of the bristles. And I'm gonna come along here, and I'm just gonna pull up and then come off, okay? So I'm putting it down, pulling up, and then bringing it off. And this should give us a really nice kind of soft grass coming through here. Can you see that, guys? So I'm just putting it down and pulling it off. Just bringing that along. Also, on your paper, just get used to what your brushes will do and how you're going to make them. Because although I've got to use my brush horizontally, I can use it vertically and give myself some longer grass through here. It's just about keeping it at that right angle and kind of using the tip of your brush. Okay, so I'm pulling that up through there. Come round here. There we have it, our beautiful sunset and palm tree. I really hope you've enjoyed today, okay? If you've liked what you've seen and liked what you've created, please hit the subscribe button and like and share so you know when my tutorials are coming up before anyone else. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye.